What's going on, everyone? Happy Wednesday to everyone. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update for Wednesday, August 14th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, this is where I do the daily pandemic update on COVID, giving you the news of the day, the data of the day. Plus, if there's news about other viruses, we do talk about that as well. Those who have been following my channel for a long time know that in the wintertime, in the fall, we'll be talking about RSV, flu, and all those other viruses. And we may be talking a little bit more about another virus again, Mpox. Yeah, you can probably see the headline here. That's going to be something we're talking about in just a moment. But hey, the most important thing we do touch on on this channel is COVID, long COVID, anything COVID related. We're in a massive summer wave right now that just does not want to let up. You're going to see in some data today, some places that peaked may be going back up once again. Yeah, it's it's not good. And hopefully within a couple weeks, it'll start to get better. But then comes the death wave. You need to be informed with what's going on because... Let's face it, you were told COVID was mild and that it was not a big deal. While, yes, in many cases it is, quote, less severe, there's still people dying of COVID. If someone's dying of COVID, it wasn't mild for them, no matter what the case may have been. So if you're new to my channel, subscribe down below, give it a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and, of course, leave your comments down below. I'll try to get through as many comments as I can, but some days, with the way the channel's been growing, uh, some days I just can't get, not get through all the comments because there's so many of them. Alrighty, starting off today with some important breaking news, and that is The Who. No, not the rock band. The WHO, the World Health Organization, declares MPOX a public health emergency of international concern. And yes, this is not the first time this has happened. It also happened back in 2022, but here we are again. Times have changed. It's become a little bit concerning again, at least right now in Africa. And Yahoo News put this headline. So MPOX declared a global public health emergency by the WHO as a new deadlier strain spreads in Africa. Now, that's not cause for panic here in the United States yet. It's not cause for panic in many countries it's just a cause for opening your eyes and just paying attention to what's going on we do have one very important effective tool here in the united states we can use to monitor it. that effective tool would be wastewater we take a look at wastewater all the time here and wastewater scan which we look at at least three four times a week does show that as one of the things it's checked for on their charts one other thing that you should be um knowing about is what some of the symptoms are of mpox and that can include fever rashes body aches swollen lymph nodes chills and general exhaustion you know some of these things that you can see with other viruses as well like chills general exhaustion that's something that can happen with COVID. so it's something that we need to keep our eyes on but it's not something that we should panic over and to be honest with you we're not seeing a lot of mpox in wastewater right now but hey i'll keep my eyes open if i see any detections of it it's something we will take a look moving on now to something else that could become an evolving headline down the line not just here in the u.s but around the world because take a look at this back to school in korea is already a disaster buckle up u.s war next that's what i tweeted out last night but the headline underneath is covid 19 cases in children surge 179 percent amid back to school concerns and i've been mentioning it for a long time there are already a few schools here in the united states that are dealing with this and down in tennessee there is a school that has already had to close it's mid-south elementary school shut down due to covid cases then moving on to i believe this is montgomery alabama yes montgomery alabama jag high school is already closed for two days we're doing virtually due to you guessed it, a COVID outbreak. It's already starting up in schools. That's two schools already. And we decided to do something on our site. And I want to show this to you. Let me uh, pull this up. Actually, let's go to the homepage of the site. We decided that, you know how we um, have an archive of COVID outbreaks? Well, 
There's a brand new section within this. COVID outbreaks in U.S. schools. So far, this is just the two that I've added for the new school year. I will probably add in the previous school year at a later date and time, or I can actually do some sort of a subcategory type thing where we'll actually have uh, previous outbreaks from like when back when I started to say 2022, 2023, we'll do something like that so they don't get mixed in and maybe change this into 2024 to 2025 school year COVID outbreaks. It'll include K through 12 schools and maybe even college outbreaks as well. Yep, it's it's a thing. Back to school. It's coming. Whether you're ready for summer to end or not, it's coming. And yes, there are going to be COVID cases and COVID outbreaks. Who knows? We'll see how many outbreaks that totals to by the end of the season. All right, moving on to another virus once again. Swine flu this time in Lansing, Michigan. Yes, a county resident has tested positive in Ingham County. And yes, that is a relatively um, something of concern. The swine flu variant or H3N2V is different from highly pathogenic avian influenza which has affected dairy and poultry farms. Yes, haven't heard about swine flu in a while, but there is a resident with it in Michigan. It's just one resident so far. It's not cause for panic or alarm. It's just something that we need to keep an eye on. Something else we'd like to keep an eye on. It's what's going on with the COVID situation in the United States. And this go around, let's take a look at Vermont. Vermont reports two more deaths of COVID as COVID cases remain elevated at this time. And they are seeing the number of COVID cases elevated. And there were 236 cases reported in the last week. That's pretty significant for Vermont because Vermont only has 600 something thousand residents. But it says your cases had been falling in April and May. They were low as 31. And well, they have risen. And yes, it's still an ongoing issue there. And you know what? I think we'll take a look at a wastewater site in Vermont today, plus a few other places. Texas is a place that we need to look at as well. All right, moving on to this. We've been talking about this summer surge all, all summer long. I've been getting a lot of comments from people here on YouTube, from people saying they know someone who's sick, they're sick, they're positive, family members are positive, friends are positive. I said, you know what, let's take this over to Twitter and see what happens. Well... My goodness, I asked, and people delivered with comments. 123 comments. No, we're not going to read all 123, but there's a lot of people who know someone who is sick with COVID right now. That's pretty significant for the summer months. And first off, Bree put, look at this. Uh, we actually found out something else within this. Cousin Strep, uh, step parent, brain cancer survivor, is hospitalized with COVID right now. Old high school friends, yep, infected. Uh, COVID, and then read this, circulating freely through facility at Penn, Vet, and semester didn't even start yet. Yes, that is University of Pennsylvania, which is right here where I live in my city of Philadelphia. It's about a uh, half hour south of me over in University City section of the city, and we do know they share a campus with Drexel. That's not good. If COVID's already circulating there, Prior to the new semester starting, yeah, that's very bad. Just brief, put both my kids, one at home, one in a different state. I mean, on and on it goes. There are so many comments of people here who know someone who is sick right now. Fee put, both my husband and I never had COVID until we were both tested positive two weeks ago. We're both updated on vaccines, but last one was nine months ago. I'm sick blank, took Paxlovid and HV rebound. That's as bad as when I originally tested positive. I'm telling you, this variant right now, what's going around? A lot of people I'm hearing from are saying, whoa, I wasn't expecting to be this sick with COVID. I thought it was just mild or like a cold. No, no. Right now, people are having some symptoms. I mean, while not everyone's being hospitalized, it's really taking people down and stopping them from their daily activities because they are just feeling so sick right now. All right, the UK, we will get an update on that tomorrow. Not going to read any more comments. I mean, we could be here all day reading those comments, and we have a lot more things to get through. National Allergy Map, I do want to refresh this. Um, it's saying 29% of the country is at medium, but we're seeing something that's not good. 
pollen levels. Look at all these areas that are starting to show up red. I know, it looks like spring once again, doesn't it? Look at uh, Massachusetts, Connecticut, New York, Northwest Pennsylvania, Ohio, Indiana, portions of Michigan, Wisconsin, Iowa, even down in Oklahoma, Kansas. I mean, there's a lot of places showing up red, a lot of orange, and air quality. This is very important. Uh, this is actually really bad. We have a ton of places that are just not good wildfires. There's more of them starting to kick up once again in Canada. Remember I said I would look into it? Take a look here. You can see air quality values, they're really bad. And I was taking a look at one of the computer models I use when I track weather. And there's a smoke model that I can use on one of them. It's called the RAP smoke model. I should have pulled that up for you today, but we honestly don't have time to look at that. And it was showing that it's going to continue in the Northeast at least for the next 48 hours. Beyond that, it could come at any given time. As long as these wildfires are going in Canada, Western Canada, the West Coast U.S., at any given time when you least expect it. And let's be honest, what's going on in the Northeast right now was totally unexpected. It was not mentioned in the weather forecast the past couple days. There was mention of it today at least on the new news broadcast, that, hey, the wildfire smoke well, it was supposed to be nice weather. Now wildfire smoke is impacting breathing. Please be very careful if you suffer from asthma. I have limited my time outside today. I haven't gone out much at all today. Just because, you know, that smoke, it's in the air, and the bad air quality, it could cause an asthma flare-up. All right, taking a look at heat-related illnesses, yeah, there's still a problem all across the country. They actually went up a little bit in the past week. Want to learn more about the climate and weather? Climate Data Report is my place for that over on X. Philadelphia reported 773 EMS incidents yesterday. That is down slightly. I am happy about that, but let's do a look in at what's going on in surrounding counties right now. Live looking. Currently, there are 14 calls right now for you know, emergency ambulance calls in Montgomery County. I'm seeing stroke. I'm seeing respiratory difficulty a couple times. Diabetic emergencies, cardiac emergencies, and over in Chester County, what are we seeing right now? I'm seeing, wow, wow, not one, not two, not three, but four respiratory emergencies, one sick person calls. You know, like I said, air quality is bad today, so that could be hampering people's ability to breathe properly. Moving on now. Uh, do we want to look at Maryland today? Yeah, why not? Let's take a look at what's going on, if we can, with what's going on with Maryland. Here we go. And we do see, wow, a lot of yellow alerts. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 hospitals just in this region. And I believe this is Region 5 of Maryland are on divert status from the emergency department at this time. And we take a look at Region 3. Wow, look at how... Jesus... Uh, apologies, but this caught me off guard. I did, haven't seen Region 3 today. Wow, that is really... That many hospitals are saying, hey, our emergency room is swamped right now. I don't know. Was it always this bad before COVID? I don't know. In the summertime? I don't think so. Taking a look at Canada for today, we do see the viral activity levels. Uh, let's see. It was grayed out just a second ago. Here we go. Moderate for COVID. Low for flu A, low for flu B. And RSV is low at this time. Walgreens this week does report a positivity rate of 38.3%. The prior week was 40.4%, down 2.2%. And there were 11,620 new tests. Taking a look now at some CDC data. And we see on the CDC Nowcast page that the latest variant causing problems is the KP3.1.1 variant at 27 percent. All right, we do want to take a look at some wastewater sites today, but first we got to get to our notes for today. Wednesday, August 14th, pandemic update notes. Maryland reports 2,583 new cases this week, which is down from last week. That's some good news because they need their cases to start dropping. Out. Clearly, there's something going on that's causing the hospitals to be busy. I honestly don't know if it's COVID or not, but uh, they should not be that busy. Uh, maybe long COVID, maybe something else. I don't know. Maryland uh, reports once again 2,583 new cases. That's down from last week. Michigan does report 3,789 new cases and 16 new deaths. Unfortunately, my friends, that is up again this week. Maine cases dropped to 546 this week with no additional deaths. And Florida, that's, what's going on in Florida? Florida was starting to drop. 
And now Florida's just yesterday reported a higher number than any given day last week. Florida added 3,900 new cases just yesterday alone. That's totally ridiculous. I do thank our friendly user that leaves comments down below that provides us with this data. Uh, CSJ, I think his name is. Char we'll call him Charles. I think that's what his name is over on X. Thank you very much for providing this data. Now let's take a look at a few wastewater sites, starting off with Vermont, first as promised. We'll do one, maybe two wastewater sites in Vermont. Montpelier at this time, a little bit of dropping in COVID, and we will come down here. We'll take a look at MPOX. No detections of MPOX. Taking a look, let's go over to South Burlington and see what's going on there. Rising ever so slightly for COVID. High levels detected. No MPOX at this time. Now let's go down to Texas because I was told there is some rising going on in Dallas once again. Yes, that unfriendly reversal that we've been seeing. And eh, this wastewater site of 270,000 people. Slight reversal. Nothing major. MPOX at this time is not being detected. Let's go to another wastewater facility just next door. This one's flat at this time. And oh, look at this. Back on, when was that? Back in July, early July, there was a detection of MPOX. Let's go to the south side wastewater facility. And we can see here on today's update that it is flat at this time. Now let's go just a little bit to the north. Let's go up to Sunnyvale and see what's going on there. Again, I don't know why this chart is zoomed out so much. Does not make much sense to me. And here's another one that's dropping. So actually, though it looked like it was starting to rise yesterday, when I looked at it last night, looks like today it update to not rising in the Dallas area at this time. Now, we just talked about Florida in our notes a few moments ago. I want to see what's going on in South Orange County. And, well, it was dropping, but now it's not really dropping that much anymore. It's kind of flattened just a little bit. That, my friends, is something that we have to keep an eye on. Hopefully it doesn't go up. Hopefully it will start going back down once again very soon. All right, let's take a look at what's going on now in New Jersey. And New Jersey came in today with 572 COVID hospitalizations. That is slightly higher than yesterday's 569. Eight people on a ventilator, 54 people in the ICU. Discharges, 81 were reported. In New York State today, we do have to take note of a couple things. First off, 1,373 people tested positive. Take a look at the average trend chart. You can see here it was starting to pick up the pace going down. It's not dropping as fast now. It slowed off. And that could just be a notch where it's going to level off. Then it will continue down. Or when school opens up in a week or two, maybe it starts going back up. Hopefully it doesn't do to going back up business. But nonetheless... Though still dropping, it has slowed down slightly at this time. It's something we will have to keep an eye on. And you can notice here, as it was going up, when the wave was increasing, you can see here, it did pause and then it continued going up. So it could just pause and then continue going down. We've seen that happen numerous times before in different places. Taking a look at hospitalizations in New York State, we'll look at a couple different places. First off... Statewide, New York State reports 1,255 hospitalizations, 138 people in the ICU. The capital region for today, and this is going to refresh on us, it always does that and reverts back to the statewide level. The capital region for today continued to go higher, so clearly it has not peaked up in that region, at least not yet. Well, maybe tomorrow will be a different story, but 82 people hospitalized today, 17 people in the ICU. Yeah, that's an increase. Central region of New York State is seeing levels drop a little bit today. 41 people in the hospital, 10 in the ICU. Let's go down to the Mohawk Valley and see what's going on there. Dropping levels there. Long Island, how about there? Let's see what's going on. Long Island, still a little bit elevated, but down slightly from yesterday. And New York City, this is some good news. New York City overall is starting to drop, but today, for some reason, not good. Today had a little bit of a rise to 454 with 52 people in the ICU. New York State, when they update tomorrow, will have uh, New York City cases added in. And real quickly, let's take a look at North Country. North Country has been dropping at this time. Remember we were watching wastewater site near there? Well, the hospital situation is now dropping. That is some good news. Alrighty, folks, that does it for the Wednesday edition of the Pandemic Update. We'll have another edition of the Pandemic Update again tomorrow. If you enjoyed this, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe down below. 
hit that notification bell. Share this with anyone you know. Leave your comments down below. And if you want to support the channel, there's ways to do that listed down below. And of course, there will be a link to a thread with all the news stories used today. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone and have a fantastic Wednesday evening. Thanks for watching.